Hello and welcome to this tutorial. Recently I've been playing around with Vellum in Houdini quite a lot and I thought I'd share how I made this inflating spheres effect. Let's start out by creating a geometry node and then create a box and set the size to 0 0.5, 1.5 and 0 0.5. So basically I want to fill this box with spheres. So let's create a BDB from polygons and set the voxel size to 0 0.01. And then let's create a BDB to spheres and set the min radius to 0 0.5. Enable the max radius and set that to 12. Set the min spheres to 4 and the max spheres to 40. And I just want to disable the overlapping and enable the p-scale attribute. Cool. So this is just a really nice easy way of filling some geometry with some spheres but I want the topology of my spheres to work for the sim. So what I want to do is create another sphere and view that and set the primitive type to polygon and increase the frequency to six and increase the uniform scale to two. Then let's pack that. and create a copy to points. And connect them up like this. Cool. So basically that's just replaced these VDB spheres with packed geometry spheres that has triangles as the topology. Cool. So I just want to make sure that none of these spheres have any issues with the sim so I'm just going to scale these down slightly so what we can do is create a wrangle node connect that here and multiply the p scale attribute by 0 0.9 so if at p scale times equals 0 0.9 So that just scales it down slightly. Awesome. Next, let's create a sort node. And then set the point sort to by Y. So the reason we're creating the sort node is because we want to enable the bottom sphere first for the sim and progressively work upwards. So that you can see what the sort node is doing we can change to the wireframe shading and enable the point numbers. And so basically this bottom sphere is point number zero and that number just slowly increases up to 39. Cool. So I'll just change the shading back to smooth wire shaded and turn that off. Next, let's create a blast mode. And I want to blast by the frame number, so dollar if. Now, this is basically removing the points randomly. And the reason why is because we need to change the group type to points. And that's starting to work almost the way we want. We just want to delete non-selected. Awesome. So next let's create a transform node and I just want to transform all these spheres up so that they're above the ground plane. So let's go move that up by 1.75. Cool. And then just so that we can actually sim the spheres, I'm going to unpack at the end. 
but there might be one issue with this blast here. If I just template this section here, you might notice it's actually missing this sphere. It's missing this one. And it's because this sphere has point number zero, but we start on frame one. So what we want to do is add a back tick here and a back tick here and go minus one. So it just decreases the value by one. So it starts at zero. Cool. So it hasn't left out that one now. Next, I want to create the container for the spheres to fall in. So let's create a, another box and set the size to 0 0.5, 1 and 0 0.5. Let's view that now. Cool. And then let's just set the center to 0 0.5 so that it's sitting on top of the grid. And then let's create a bevel because we just want to round the edges a bit and set the distance to 0 0.05 and let's change the divisions to something like 10. Cool. So what we want to do is let the spheres drop into this container but we need to remove the top um, and then essentially seal the container once all the spheres have fallen in. So let's just select the top faces here and press delete and then basically we want to just duplicate this blast node and go delete non-selected so that we have the top here and then let's just transform this let's transform this along the x-axis by 0 0.5 and then merge Cool. So now we have an open container for the spheres to fall in. So let's set a couple of keyframes on this lid. So let's go to frame 71 and then just set a keyframe here and then go to frame 72, set that back to zero and set another keyframe. So Hopefully that should give our spheres enough time to fall in and then seal the top and let the spheres inflate. Cool. So I'm just going to create a couple of nulls now. So this can be our spheres. And then create another null. And this is our collider. Now we can start working on the sim. So let's create a vellum configure balloon. Cool. And then let's create a vellum solver. Make sure we're at frame one. Cool. And then connect the spheres to the first input and the collider to the third input. So now if I enable the solver and press play, you'll notice just one sphere drops. So essentially we need to set up the emission so that it doesn't just emit on the first frame. So the way we can do this is let's create a couple of nulls. So let's create one here and connect the first output of the volume pressure and call this geo and then create another null and connect the second output and call that con for constraints. Cool. And then let's dive into the volume solver. And then we need to create a volume source node. And then let's set the emission type to each frame. 
and then let's set the SOP path to the geo now we created and let's set the constraint SOP path to the con now that we created cool and so for the activation what we want to do is emit a sphere every second frame rather than every frame so that they don't fall as rapidly so we can set up an expression so let's go dollar ff modulus uh, 2 equals 0 and then connect that to the source output so if we start moving forward you'll see that every second frame it emits a sphere cool so let's dive out back to the geometry and press play cool so obviously the spheres don't look the way we want them yet but it's starting to emit the spheres correctly so let's go back to the first frame and let's start editing some of the constraints so that the spheres hold their shape a bit better so let's select the vellum cloth node and then let's go to the stretch section and just change the dampening ratio to 0 0.05 and then on the volume pressure in the stretch section let's increase the stiffness to 1 e plus 8 and then change the stiffness to 1 and change the dampening ratio to 0 0.05 and then on the volume solver itself let's change the time scale to 0 0.5 so that the spheres just drop a bit slower and increase the sub steps to 4 cool so now we can press play and have a look at the spheres cool that's starting to look a bit nicer and they're just holding their shape a bit better awesome so you'll notice that they're not inflating so the next thing we need to do is start to work on that so first I actually want to slowly turn off the gravity so that they start floating so what we can do is go to the forces tab and then on frame one let's just set a key on the gravity and then let's just turn off auto update and change that to manual and go to frame 240 and completely remove the gravity so let's set another keyframe so now we can actually enable the inflation so first thing we need to do is go to the volume pressure node and in the stretch section let's enable the output group and let's just change this to p stretch and the reason we change that name is because essentially if you're using a bunch of different constraints it's just good practice to change the output group name so that you're not editing all the values on all the different constraints so with that set let's copy that and dive into the volume solver and then let's create a volume constraints properties node and then let's enable the group and paste the group name and then let's enable the rest length scale and then at frame 36 so I don't want it to start inflating straight away I want it to just I want them all to drop and then once they've dropped for them to start inflating so let's set a key at frame 36 at a value of 1 and then at frame 240 let's increase the the scale by something like 
so I set another key. Cool. And then let's connect that to the force output. So now if we go back to the first frame and change from manual to auto update and press play, we should hopefully start to see the spheres inflating. So that you don't have to wait around, I just ran a flipbook and this is how the sim is looking now. Cool, I'm happy with how that's looking. So the last thing we can do to improve the final quality of the sim is create a vellum post process node. that here and I'll just go to frame 240 so that I can see what it's doing and I just want to increase the spatial blur to 1 so that just smooths it out a little bit and then change the subdivisions to loop awesome and then what I want to do is just fix this gap between the spheres so fortunately we have this extrude by thickness option which just fixes that nicely. Cool, so that's how you can make this inflating spheres effect in Houdini. Thanks so much for watching this tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed it and that you've learned something new. If you'd like to see more from me in the future, feel free to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.